Okay, welcome back. We're learning Imre Bina, and before we get into the actual book, I wanted to give a little introduction to the general structure of the book. The book is made up of four Sha'arim, and in general, in the books of the Mitla Rebbe, he calls each of his books, or each section, subsection, like sub-book, a Sha'ar, he calls it a gate, and... Um, so there are four gates in Rebina. And one of the reasons why he calls them gates is because a gate represents something that's very large, uh, big, not just a door, but like a big entryway. And so the style of teaching of the Mitzvah of Hasidus is that he explains everything at length with a lot of explanations. And that's the idea, uh, it's related to the idea of Bina, according to Kabbalah, are called the gates of Bina, 50 gates of Bina. And so a lot of times in like in Eitz Chaim of the Rizal and the Mitzvah Farm, he names his books gates. And so Imre Bina has four sub-books, which are called four gates. The first one is called the Peseach Hashar, and uh, Pesach Hashar, and that, that means the entryway. And the idea is that this first section talks about how to study Hasidus, how to study Kabbalah, how to study God's unity, and the pr- correct approach to learning, the correct um, emotional preparation, what your goal should be, what you should focus on. And so that's the discussion of this first gate. And this, uh, if you've learned Shari Yichud of the Mitla Rebbe also, it parallels the first nine chapters of Shari Yichud, where it explains what his bonus is, the proper method of contemplating, studying, learning, meditating, whatever you want to call it, uh, on these topics, and how you should prepare yourself and what your focus should be. Um, after that, he has Shar Kriya Shema. And uh, like we said, that uh, Kriya Shema, in the introduction, he says that the mitzvah of Shema is related to the idea of God's unity. And this chapter actually explains the concept of God's unity and how to understand that properly. Um, and uh, this is... Uh, so that's like the bulk of the actual like theory of the Sefer, um, the actual discussion of God's unity. And then afterwards, he has two more gates that discuss how to apply that to our lives, to our emotions, and to our intellect. And those two gates are called Shar Tzitzis and Shar Tefillin. Um, and the reason for that is because it says that anyone that reads the Shema without wearing, if they're not wearing their talis and tefillin, their tzitzis, and it's filling at the time that they read it, it says that um, it's as if they're giving false testimony to themselves on themselves. And the reason is because it says in the Shema that we have to wear tzitzis and wear tefillin. And so the simple th- reason is that if we're saying that we're committing to do these mitzvahs, we're committing to wear tzitzis and put on the tefillin, and we're not actually doing it while we're saying that we're supposed to do it, that's kind of hypocritical. But on a more internal level, according to uh, the inner teachings of the Torah on a more, you know, like moral level. Um, the idea is that the mitzvah of Kriyashma is understanding, bring our faith in into our understanding, taking our faith in God's unity and really understanding that so that we understand our faith, we strengthen our faith, and then it becomes something that we can really understand and feel and bring into our lives. And so the idea, we do that in two ways. One is Shar Tzitzis, which is, represents the idea of taking our understanding, bringing it into our emotions, and that is symbolized by the tzitzis, or the talis, which is like a square garment, and then on each of the four corners, we tie on these strings, and they're knotted on in such a way that um, each one has is four strings that are doubled over to make eight, and so the square garment itself represents our, uh, what's called the makif of bina, it's it's the aspect of our understanding that's really beyond um, kind of like the axioms and things that are at the, the f- you know, fundamentals of our understanding that's beyond, you know, full intellect. And uh, the idea of the strings represent bringing that down into our understanding, into our heart. And so there's eight strings on each corner, and eight times four equals 32. Now, 32 in Hebrew is spelled lev, which is the heart, and so in general, that's the idea of bringing that understanding down into our heart, our, our heart. and that also corresponds to the 32 pathways of wisdom, or the 32 paths of bina, which are called the shvile bina. And so that's what the tzitz represents, taking the understanding of Shema, which would be like the garment, and bring it down into our heart through the strings. And that's why when we read Shema, we're supposed to hold the strings, actually, of our tzitzis right next to our heart, because that represents bringing that understanding into our heart, so that we should feel it.
Okay, then tefillin is a similar idea. Tefillin represents the makif over our head, and that's why we wear these little square boxes, which again, it's square because it's the makif of bina. And inside are four parashies, four, uh, it, it's either in the hand tefillin, it's one piece of parchment, and the head tefillin, it's four little compartments, one with each one with it, another piece of parchment, so a total of four. And on those, there are various little portions of the Torah written. And so that, the box represents what's beyond our understanding, and the straps represent bringing that down to action. That's why the straps are supposed to go down our arm, and the head straps extend down to our knee and down to our leg. And that represents bringing our understanding again down into action, but the tefillin represents doing that more from an intellectual level, while as the sits represents doing that more on an emotional level. And uh, so in general, that's the idea of the four gates. And uh, we're going to start the first gate in the next video.